We see the Pacific Health Summit as a place for influential and innovative decision makers to come together. We also see the summit as a place to launch new ideas, initiatives, and form collaborations. So we view the Pacific Health Summit as a process, one where ideas can be translated into action. And we hope that there will be many new projects and actions taken as a result of our meetings here in June. We have the intellect, the will, the skills, and the financial resources to make the world healthier. I invite you now to join us and make that very demanding effort to make the world and our future healthier. The reason we're here is to answer an enormous challenge, to improve the health of all people and do it at an affordable cost to all economies. Universal health has become a world aspiration, along with peace and prosperity. It is fitting that we meet today in Seattle to address this challenge. You are world leaders with a vision of global health, and we are a community dedicated to the goal of global health. Together, we will need to create new models for cooperation and partnership. Each country is a different experiment in health care, having its unique populations, cultures, and societies. I suspect there is much to learn from one another's experiments in the provision of health care to their people. The Pacific Health Summit has, since its beginning, been a forum for not only discussing challenges and solutions, but also for forging projects to work cooperatively. I hope we can all leave this conference having not only generated some novel ideas, but also having committed ourselves to new collaborations. In 1918, the world endured a catastrophic pandemic of influenza, resulting in somewhere between 20 and 100 million deaths. We really don't know for sure. Not to mention massive disruption of daily life on an unprecedented scale. Today, the world faces the threat of a similar pandemic, this time caused by a strain of influenza, H5N1, that has shown the ability to overcome the species barrier from birds to humans. Ominously, with a 70% case fatality rate, this threat appears to be even more lethal than the 1918 influenza virus. Although the spread of this virus has been contained somewhat, because it has not yet been shown to be easily transmitted from human to human, the threat that it will eventually mutate to such a form is very real, and the world must be prepared for that eventuality.